but actually understanding those communities and where there are points of friction and where things are working well and being proud of the Douglas community that we've got. I work as a barrister and my specialisms include local government law, human rights, also employment and equality. I'm the lone parent of three school-aged children whom I raised by myself. So between us, my family's used pretty much all of the services that Hackney Council offers. And the Women's Equality Party is the newest party in the country, founded in 2015, with a fastest growing party. We are a grassroots movement, and we welcome we members and associates who also belong to other political parties, because we're not interested in political posturing. We want to work together with everybody to achieve practical political change. We don't see politics in two dimensions, the right or the left, the have or the have not, or as Ian Duncan Smith of the Conservatives said, hard-working families versus low-value people, or as Labour says, the many versus the few. I've got to say, as a racial minority, I always found it slightly creepy that Labour talks so often much about the many and not the few. We believe in putting the most vulnerable at the top of the list for our protection. And as you'll see, um, that influences the key issues that my team in Hackney have asked me to campaign on. So I will resist all forms of sexism and harassment in Hackney, and that includes street harassment, and one of the issues on the agenda today is Islamophobia, which is an aspect of street harassment. We say no to cuts in funding for special educational needs and disabilities. We think it's time to invest in the future of Hackney, and, um, well, you have to read the rest of the leaflet, because I've got to share the time out, so I'll be right now. My name is India Zulman and I have lived and worked in Hackney for over 25 years. I run a small electrical contracting company. My wife and I are also foster carers for vulnerable children. I am an active campaigner against Hackney government and had good success. I was first motivated to campaign by the council's unfair and untransparent consultation process under control party during my local area. Labour Council and Ward Council dismissed our concerns at first. Wouldn't listen, but I kept fighting and changed that decision. I learned that the long-standing single-party dominance in Hackney Town Hall has not been healthy for local democracy, and we must have change. I look forward to listening to you. Thank you very much. Good evening, and thank you for inviting me along to speak with you. Like Harini, did I pronounce that right, Harini? Um, I have no political agenda, believe it or not, but my name keeps popping up. Why? Because I've always kept it real. I always say to my people, we, they call us the ethnic minorities, but in fact, when you look around, we're the majority, because there's more of us than the, than the others. Now, I'm here because I ranted in a riot 11 years ago, and my passion for community, my passion for youths, my passion against the gun and knife crime, my passion to make things improve in our, in, in our community and environment that we live in. It's all about connecting, each one teach one, making the, 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 the communities understand each other's cultures and where we're all coming from. My, as I said before, my main beef in Hackney is the gun and knife crime, and it's got way, way out of hand. So I will be telling you about my um, the plans to introduce to Hackney the Violence Reduction Unit. Now the Violence Reduction Unit will be working with gang members, ex-gang members, um, police, social workers, social services, teachers, and embracing the, the family of the of, um, youths out there that are committing these crimes. So I beg you to support me on this. If I win or if I don't win, I will help whatever mayor gets on board to achieve something as far as safety is concerned in this budget. Thank you. 
Uh, thanks, Munaf, and thank you for hosting this hustings. This is my fourth visit to the North London Muslim Centre, and whenever I come here, I think it embodies real happy values. It's absolutely diverse, inclusive, but as Munaf said, it's open to the wider community, and I think it's those values that I've tried to embody as mayor and I bring into this campaign. And I'm really proud that it isn't just about me standing here before you uh, wanting to be your mayor, it's about the thousands of people that are members of the Labour Party here in Hackney who want to make a difference. And it's our 57 fantastic, diverse Labour council candidates that will work with me to deliver real change in this borough. And Sam, Caroline and Anthony are the representatives here in Cason I'm incredibly proud of. All of you on your chair have over 100 different ideas from the Labour Party about how we can make this borough fairer, safer and more sustainable. And that's what we have always delivered in this borough, a clear set of ideas about how we can tackle those big issues, whether it's gun and knife crime, inequality, poor housing, air pollution, bringing our communities together and making sure that this borough stays the type of place that we all want to live and represent. I'm not a career politician, I'm a campaigner. That's why I was elected as mayor. It was fighting things like the Housing Act that was going to devastate our social housing in this borough. It was about fouting welfare reform and all those other things. So it's not just about fighting, it's about what you can do, and that's what's embodied in our manifesto. And I hope that's why you continue to support me as mayor of Hackney. Thank you. Party candidate for mayor. Uh, thank you very much for having us here today. Um, I've been a resident of Hackney my whole life. I was uh, went to a primary school here, and anyone who's lived in Hackney as long as I have will know uh, there's been lots and lots of improvements, uh, but there's also been uh, some things we would like to see done better, and there have been some things that have gone worse. So obviously there's been uh, a lot of talk about regeneration and social cleansing and things like that, but we need to make sure that we're speaking up for the residents of Hackney. And, uh, and the, the mayor position is about having a vision for the, for the bigger picture of Hackney. So there's still five things I'd like to take home from uh, what the Green Party is offering in terms of vision. Uh, I've written them on my hands, convenient five fingers. Uh, we want uh, to really improve the housing uh, that's going on and the, and the developments that are coming through, making sure they're there for people. We want to make sure we have a thriving economy that really takes uh, people with us. Uh, we want to uh, improve the equality and health of residents of Hackney. Uh, we want to make sure there's education for all, and we want to have a bright green vision for the future of Hackney. Now, uh, the main thing I think is we've got a very strong Labour council here, and uh, that means sometimes they're not listening to residents as much as uh, I think they should be. And we can actually get more interesting, uh, diverse voices onto the council if you think about voting for uh, green councillors in the upcoming election. Uh, so thank you very much for having me uh, here today. Good evening all. Uh, my name is Brendan Williams and I'm standing for the position of mayor because I have very specific tasks and objectives to achieve. Um, the mayor, or ex-mayor as he's right now because he's just a candidate like all of us here at this moment, um, he speaks of very broad generalities. Um, I wish to address very specific issues that are achievable. And the number one issue for me is housing. And but housing, in fact, is essentially broken up into three areas. Number one, you have the shortage of housing. Number two, you have great difficulties in the private sector. And number three, you have the deteriorating management crisis in social housing, both in terms of TMOs, tenant management organizations, and housing associations. And I have actually, um, you will see from my manifesto, 
that I am proposing very specific, not broad generalities, but very specific solutions to better management in social housing. You know, you go to around the bar and you hear some horror stories about the way tenants are being treated by the management of social housing. And you will see from my manifesto that I've put in place very clear plans to improve social housing. I haven't really dwelt on the private sector um, because essentially the council has very little control over the private sector in the sense that the legislation that controls um, private tenancies is the Housing Act 1988. Sorry? Ten seconds. Right, sorry. Um, well, you know, the other matter is um, I wish for another specific item to house the homeless by building 500 um, chalet-like units in parks by rushing through planning permission. It's achievable and it will essentially reduce the homelessness in Hackney unlike waiting, Labour suggests we wait until enough brick buildings are built. I want to solve the homelessness problem now. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for the uh, introduction. Um, we now move on to the, the question element of our uh, program. Um, we invited questions to be presented to us by email. Uh, we received a number of questions, um, but there are quite a few questions that I don't know if we necessarily are going to get through all of them right now. However, if the candidates are willing, those questions we, which we can't answer today, um, I'm, I'm willing to pass it on to them. And if they feel that they can respond to them, um, I will share that through our Facebook or some other website that we have. Um, I would appreciate that. Um, What I do want to do is, I, I know there's a decent presence here as well. I think some of you may want to ask questions too. So I'm going to try and go through um, a couple of questions quickly. Um, we may skip a few of the questions, um, and then we may open it up to the floor, time permitting. So if I can kick off with the first couple of questions. Um, and we, I have informed the candidates that I want, uh, expect all the candidates to answer all the questions. Purely because we don't have the time for that. If we have, if we have two hour things, then that might have been possible. So we might be selective in terms of who um, might uh, um, answer those questions. Um, but if they feel that, any of the candidates feel that they actually want to ask, answer a question, then they will be welcome to do so. So the first question is uh, in relation to the recent shocking news a few hours ago of another study in Hackney. And the, with, the, with the recent increase in violent crimes, as a community, we may need to focus more on the underlying issues that cause us crimes. What would you do as a candidate to help combat the gang culture that has led to the senseless violence over the last few days and today? Uh, Mayor, uh, thanks. Thanks, Munaf. Um, none of us cannot fail to have been moved by the recent incident uh, in you know, only this evening, but also uh, in the last month. The critical thing to look at is how we respond together as a community. The council has a role, the community has a role, young people have a role, families have a role, statutory services have a role, and it's how you have a leadership across all of that that really delivers results. We have a fantastic track record in Hackney of doing that type of work, and it was working. We were bringing down serious youth violence, we were bringing down stabbings, we were bringing down 
gun and knife crime. That has gone into sharp reverse over the last eight years, and it has gone into sharp reverse during austerity. It's been the impact of police cuts, the impact of the withdrawal of mental health services, the fact that schools cannot run extended school services, all of those things have had an effect. We have done what we tried to do to preserve youth services. We have the second highest spend on youth services uh, in London, and we have a fantastic integrated gangs unit which does all the work of Pauline's uh, violent rips production unit. We already have that here in Hackney, and it was built on the principles set out uh, in Glasgow because we had them down here in 2010 to talk to us about how to set it up. It's about continuing to invest in that, but it's also enough, it's about innovating as well. So we're about to launch Red Thread into the Homerton, which is a new service working with young people when they've been victims of violence and taking that as a moment where you can make that intervention and make sure that they're connecting with youth and support services. We're also now rolling out contextual safeguarding, which is saying that actually some of the biggest risks to our young people are not in the home, they're out there in the community uh, and in community settings. And how do we have more out there looking at an evidence base about what works to reduce the risk and harm to our young people. But we have to continue to lobby for more police resources and more resources for the council. We've had £130 million worth of cuts, and as much as we've protected adventure playgrounds, youth services, youth outreach, social work, and all that investment, and giving people opportunities, we need to have more of that. And those are the conversations I'll be having with the Mayor of London, uh, Deputy Mayor Lyndon and others in the coming weeks and days. There's a clear commitment though to the resourcing of all of those services that underpin and support our young people. And it's about doubling down on that, listening to the community and saying what more can we do. And that's why I'm launching a Mayor's Fair Future Commission to listen to the young people themselves, not being complacent about where that spending youth services is and saying can we do better, can we do it in a different way and can we work together to roll out more for our young people. Thank you. I've got two teenage boys, and these issues are very close to my heart as a parent and living in Hackney. And I feel that Labour has a lot of very good motivations, but in Hackney we see the same bat and ball going on between the two major parties, which is a product of our first past the post two-party state system. Mm -hmm. We see central government blaming at local administration, we see local administration blaming central government for cuts. When we look at the cuts, 86 pence in every pound that this country has saved from those cuts has come from the pockets of women. And despite it being 2018 and women having equal rights in theory, we know that most women spend their money if they've got children on their children and their family. So we need to look at women's economic role and also we need to listen to the people doing the caring. One of the major pillars of the women's equality policy is valuing caring, not just the money-making activities, valuing social infrastructure and caring, including for families and young people, not just building roads and hospitals and houses. So if we want to intervene and bring down violence, and particularly look at the role of boys, we've got to look at boys growing up in Hackney, how they relate to girls, one issue is sexual harassment, um, in schools and how, what expectations boys have, boys under performance at school, lack of holiday clubs, lack of interesting activities for the kids to do, we look at lack of leisure, access to sports and other things, and also mental health issues, where there's been a huge escalation in mental health problems in teenagers because of the pressure to have and again they're different for boys, different for girls. In the Women's Equality Party we feel that there are now a, a wider range of options for girls, whether you want to remain in the home as a carer, whether you want to have a career of a different kind. I think we haven't seen enough development in masculine identity and the choices available to men. Many men would like to be more involved at home, but because of the um, lack of childcare and lack of paid paternity leave, it's very difficult for them. And we shouldn't denigrate the men who are working long hours to pay for their families. Maybe they would like to work more at home. We have a policy of universal free childcare, so really we need to shake things up in Hackney. But the most important thing for us, maybe it's a cliche to some people that we're a women's equality party and we care so much about children. But we do care about children and the family. We think it's time to give more respect to carers who work with the young people every day, inside the family and outside the family. Mum has told me just now that the council stipulates that this organisation pays the minimum wage to contractors. But when it comes to the nursery and childcare services, that stipulation doesn't matter. I think it's a disgrace. It's an important, really important role and it's an investment when we value our carers and we value our children.
Everyone agrees that. It needs to stop. Everyone agrees that. We need to talk about it. Everyone agrees that. But we've been talking about it for far too long. Uh, Philip says these things are already in place, the, v, the violent reduction unit. They are in little individual pots. They're not the way that we plan to have it constructed. It will all be working together. All these units will be tightly working together. If it is, Pete, um, Phil, Philip, please, please put me correct. But if it's working like that, no one out there is aware of it. No one knows that this is going on. We do, I do believe we took it to the council. Aren't we? we've, we've got our Lib Dem councillors here and we were told that it, it was turned away by Labour. So the option is here now to speak. But at the end of the day, these killings are affecting our whole community. I was out there the other day when the young boy got stabbed up by the night storm. I was out there the whole night till three o'clock in the morning trying to calm the others. They're all trying to go out there. It's retaliation killings going on. They're bickering killings, peer pressure killings. There is no one common denominator. And I've been at this for about 20 years now. There is no one you can put your finger on it there are lots of little pockets of problems that are now all become one big massive problem. It's like when you've got to clear the sink, you've got that great blockage and you've got to see who's got the power to shove it through. Well, that's what's going on in Hackney. We've got to get that power right. We've got to be 100% transparent with what's going on and where the money's going. And we've got to address it now. Not every day that list is going up. Every day another name is added to that list. It could be any one of us because it's not got an age limit either. It's teenagers, it's older people. Just recently, today, a man who's got stabbed today, just up the road there, 20 odd years old. Now I've got meetings with, with certain gang members I'm not lying. Certain times I get absolutely petrified. But you know what? If we've got to go onto the battlefield to win the war, then that's where I'm going to be. That, that passion is really what we need because this is a crisis and it's not a crisis that's just happened recently. This is a crisis that's been going on for a very long time. Um, I remember uh, being a teenager in Hackney and myself thinking, do I need to take a knife out onto the street to make sure that I'm safe? And I'm worrying about that as a 15-year-old. And I saw a 15-year-old be stopped and searched right outside my house. And he looked, he was about 12, and he had a, a knife on him. And I think the real question here is, like, what is the, the bigger picture? We can you look for very small little fixes, quick fixes, but there isn't one. It's a bigger picture question. It's about the community. It's about our society at large. We live in a violent society. We see it on our news every day. You know, we've got a violent government that, you know, invests in arms and, and weapons and war. And, and that sends out a message that that's what society is like. But we need to take the streets and give them back to the community. When I was a kid, I was really worried about going on the streets. My, my dad said to me, you know, until you're older, you shouldn't be out on the streets. But actually, the streets is where we actually build our communities. And that's what we need to start investing in that, making them safe spaces. I really applaud the work we've been doing on... Um, the school streets and things like that to make this, you know, take the, the, ro the roads back from cars and give them back to the people and then we can actually use those spaces for play and for enjoyment and all that kind of thing. I was at a, um, a march last year, I don't know if anyone remembers the, the Enough is Enough march that went from Islington to Hackney and uh, I spoke to um, a, a, an ex-member of a, a gang who was actually now working with young people and their emotional well-being, a lot of young men. 
and, uh, and, she, and she was saying that that's the real key issue, and it goes back to what you're saying about emotional well-being, that we need to give uh, young men, especially, a place where they can express their emotions and look for um, not authority figures that they can speak to, but members of the community that they can respect and, and work with, otherwise they've not got any, any hope. And I'll just finish with this, we need to give people hope and think about their future. We need to think about actually saying, if I've got a future, I'm invested in that, I'm not going to go out and use a knife. So we need to think about how uh, young people have like a view to the future and not see it as a bleak uh, void and see it actually as there's opportunities for them, there's skills that they can be learning, there's skills they can be sharing, and we need to do that as a community. And it's not something that we can just do as a council and make promises as, as a mayor, it's something we need to say actually, how can we facilitate the community in what they know and what they, and what they can find out for us, because it's not working top down, it needs to be from the grassroots. Move on to the next question. Um, before I move on, I'd just like to um, say, sorry, you would like to say something on this particular one? Of course. Welcome, please. Yeah, thank you. Um, uh, all right. Yeah, thank you. Um, I would like to start off by reciting what you have <coughs> said at the beginning. What are the underlying causes for this continuous search? in youth violence. And I know there's a familiar phrase, black and black crime. But in fact, there's no such thing as black and black crime. Um, you know, white people kill each other as well. Um, how the phrase black and black crime came about, I'm not sure. But in itself, it's racist. Um, but still, there are underlying crime, there are underlying causes as to why so many young black men are killing each other. And I think you've got to start with the legacy of slavery. Now, I have got a, an issue in my campaign calling on the government to give an apology for the 400 years of slavery and, and the 220 million Africans that, were, that perished uh, during that 400 years, plus the ravaging of the interland of Africa. Now, you may think, you know, slavery was ended 200 years ago, so how, why is it an issue in modern Britain in 2018. Because, you know, that kind of psychological damage passes on from family to family to generation to generation. And you've got this welled up anger in, in the victims of slavery. And as a result, it's very easy to take out that anger on each other, that is, people who look like you. Now, there's another underlying issue, and that is the family structure of many of us black people, both in the Caribbean and in this country, all due to the effect of slavery. And no one whether in Hackney or in central government, has really addressed the issue. They have basically used repressive means to address the issue, such as, you know, the use of more policing and more prisons. And that is, it may well be part of the solution in the long term. But right now, you've got to address the psychological damage that has haunted us for many centuries. And, right, and the, the effect of slavery has meant that family structures are damaged. And um, you know, many black families are headed by single mothers uh, because this society effectively denigrates and excludes 
black men as fathers, they basically promote the woman more than the man. They offer more opportunities to black women than black men. So as a result, many black men are without employment. That then has a knock-on effect in the sense that they feel that it's no point um, uh, you know, doing well in school and going on to university because there's nothing there at the end. Now, those are some of the problems that if they're addressed, and particularly if central government makes an apology for 400 years of slavery, that will then psychologically begin to have a great impact on the behavior of people because black people will be talking about that pent up, hidden anger inside of them. They'll begin to express themselves. And that's what we really want to start with. We don't want repressive, more repressive thank you. activities. Thank you, thank you. Uh, uh, Could you set a limit on answers, please? Yeah. Could you set a limit on two, three? Yeah, yeah, please. I'll come up and answer facts. Do you want me to help? I've got your watch here. Okay. Just quickly, anyone, what everybody has said on this crime that's going on at the moment, and it's sad, our thoughts and prayer with the victims. But just uh, there is no short-term solution. No, there is no like um, one solution to this problem. There is short-term and long-term solution. I'll just emphasize on one on long-term solution because I think we've said about it, um, which is we need to do some research on the rap music, violent computer games, drugs and alcohol, yeah, yeah. and their contribution in this. This is one that. <coughs> Thank you.